Hey guys, today I'm going to do the unboxing and give you guys my impressions of the Noble Cons. So these are a very, very high-end, expensive pair of IMs. Um, this is actually the second most expensive audio product I've ever bought. Um, I believe the most expensive I bought was the Monitor Audio Gold 100 speakers. I bought earlier this year for 2000 bucks US. These ones are in-ear monitors or earphones for those people who, you know, um, don't know what in-ear monitors are. They're basically just very high-end earphones um, that have a lot of different drivers inside them. Uh, but yeah, these ones are, I got on sale on Black Friday from Noble, which is a high-end US-based uh, IM maker, and I paid $1,700 for them, yes. <laughs> and that was on sale, uh, believe it or not. So the original MSRP price is $2,400 for these IMs. So that's really, really expensive. I paid seventeen hundred dollars for them, so uh, it was, I got it at a dis at a discount, but still really really expensive, right? And the reason I wanted to pay so so much money for something like this is just, um, you know, in your life, uh, especially as an audiophile like me uh, or a musician like me, um, I'm always interested to see like exactly how good the sound can get, right? For in terms of music, I love music, and now I have a record player. Um, I got high end speakers earlier this year. Uh, and for me, I'm always interested to see like just how high an audio can go, like how good can you make it sound. Of course, I don't have too much money, um, but I'm still interested to see like when you go to the really high end, right? Just how much better can you make it sound, uh, and how can I experience my music a little bit differently in a better way, right? So my whole life, I've been living, you know, just with what most people live with, which just pretty much mediocre sound quality, right? Uh, most of us use wireless earbuds or wireless headphones or um, <laughs> in the old school days you used uh, built-in, you know, the iPods with those um, those uh, earphones and earbuds that they pack into the package. Like most people just use those, right? And those suck in sound quality. So most people just listen to very mediocre or below average sound, right? They use the built-in iPod earphones, built-in iPhone earphones, AirPods or AirPods right, um, wireless ear earbuds, stuff like that, and then at home they listen to a soundbar. So most people don't really listen to very high-end audio. It's only, really only audiophiles that have the money to, to really experiment with um, with just seeing how much better it could sound get, right? And I am kind of like that as well, you know. Um, I don't want to spend too much money, obviously, but I do want to go a little bit higher end than before because I was also one of those people who just spent my whole life listening to... Um, yeah, all those below, like those cheap earbuds and uh, and cheap ear uh, wireless earphones and stuff like that and sound bars, right? Uh, for most of my life, I've been listening to that stuff. That's what most people listen to. Uh, but now I kind of want to see uh, go a little bit higher end and see just what's out there, right? How much better could I experience my sound, my my album, my libraries? Um, I want to re-experience my music in a better way. So that's why I upgraded my speakers this year, my desktop speakers and my home theater speakers. Um, I upgraded my home theater speakers from a LG soundbar all the way up to a 5.1 system uh, with a Marantz receiver and Martin Logan 15Is. And I upgraded my desktop speaker system from a Creative Sound Blaster X Katana soundbar all the way up to, um, I have what, PC, PMC DB1 Golds right now that I'm using with a Rotel uh, A12 amplifier. So I upgraded all that, and um, and then I upgraded my my uh, portable music sources as well, right? So uh, now I got my DAPs, I got my Astell and Kern SE100s, and I got my High B RS6. I'm trying to test between which one of these um, I'm thinking about keeping right now, so that's why I have two of them. Um, and then I upgraded my IEMs uh, a few months ago with the Campfire Audio. This is the Campfire Audio Solaris X, which is just I paid about 1200 bucks for these, so these are already fairly expensive IEMs. Uh, they're pretty good, uh, but still, I wanted to go even higher up and see just how much better sound quality could I uh, get for a little bit more. Um, so yeah, $1,700, the Noble Cons. Um, I'm not going to be paying anything more for like anything higher, basically. Like This is kind of my limit. Um, already, this is really, really expensive for me. So yeah, don't think of this as, oh, Tong's just going to keep you know spending more and more money. This is pretty much my limit. Um, if these sound good enough, I'm just going to stop here. I'm not going to buy any more. Okay, I just wanted to. I'm just curious to find out um, just how much better it could sound get. So here we go. Um, there's a Nobles Nanook 903 case. Okay, so this is a pretty heavy-duty case. I mean, wow, look at this. 
this is like for military, isn't it? <laughs> this is a pretty heavy duty case. So yeah, it comes with a carrying handle. I mean, you can actually, wow. I mean, that's, that's how you know that this is a pretty high end pair of IEMs is that they come with such a heavy duty case. Wow, it's very, very protective, right? So obviously something very important in this case. Um, so yeah, we just gotta, oh yeah, I'm gonna pull down on this and then lift it up like that. And then I believe it opens like this. Here we go. And uh, yeah, again, very heavy duty case that Noble gives you. Um, and they should, right? For this price, $1,700, yeah, they should give you a very good case. Um, and yeah, these are the Noble cons. Um, and what does Noble say about it, this model? This is actually their second highest model. Um, their, so their highest model is the Sultans, and I'm not willing to pay, uh, what is it, $2,300 on sale for those. Um, and they retail for almost $3,000, so that's crazy, right? But this is their second highest model, the cons, after the Sultans. Um, so yeah, the cons, uh, one interesting thing about Noble compared to other IEM makers, they don't post any of their specs. So yeah, compared to like JH Audio, 64 Audio, um, uh, FIR Audio, right, Empire Ears, uh, all these other US uh, IEM makers, like they post their specs, but not for Noble. Noble Audio has historically not posted any of their specs. So it's interesting. Uh, we don't actually know exactly um, specs wise to uh, to do a comp good comparison. So we just have to kind of listen uh, and find out. So uh, yeah, the specs of these, um, what I mean is technical specs, right? So they don't post their THD, for example, um, but they do give you exactly the technology that's inside it. So you got six drivers, Trial level hybrid technology. Um, you got three types of drivers. That's why it's hybrid. You got four balanced armatures, which are you know pretty typical in IEMs. But you got a dynamic, which I assume is used for the bass and sub bass, and a piezo electric. This is a very interesting driver type that you don't really see, you don't really see in um, in IEMs. I think these are close to electrostatics. I've only had a limited experience with electrostatics. The only other electrostatics I've tried are my TSMR Tansio Murray Lands, which had two electrostatic drivers per ear. Um, this one has one piezoelectric per ear, so that's pretty interesting. Um, it says sensitive enough use. Yes, yeah, for adapts, basically, um, all IEMs should be fairly sensitive uh, to use with smartphones and DAPs. However, the campfire audios I have are the most sensitive and that's, that's just the campfire audio being kind of um, their thing, right? They're known for being super sensitive. Uh, hand assembled and matched in the US. Of course, they're uh, from Texas. Um, campfire audios, by the way, are from Portland, Oregon. So it's interesting. Um, these are all US based companies. Uh, detachable cable with industry standard two pin configuration. That's uh, another uh, I have another cable for two pin I can uh, use as well. Um, I actually have a 2.5 millimeter balanced, so I'm gonna use my two pin connector. It's kind of annoying that there's kind of two standards going on in the industry right now. It's the two pin configuration, which is used by Noble and I believe JH Audio as well. And then some other companies like Campfire Audio and um, some other Chinese companies like TA Audio, I believe. Um, and a lot of the newer companies actually, they use the MMCX connector. So it's kind of annoying there's two industry standards right now. There's a two pin and the MMCX. So I'm not sure which one's better. Anyways, um, yeah, these are the Noble Cons. Very, very expensive pair of IEMs. Um, and yes, to the uninitiated, yeah, IEMs are basically just very high end earphones, right? <laughs> if you want to dumb it down like that. Um, doesn't say too much about the cable. I'm not sure how good this cable is. Again, I might replace this because I have a two pin cable already. Um, that is a bounced cable and has eight strands. Let's, uh, this one doesn't look as good or as, as sturdy. Uh, it comes with a bunch of tips right here. Uh, silicone tips, of course, are the standard, but also comes with some foam tips as well that will help isolate noise. But foam tips in general are a bit more colored and will add more bass to your sound, so try not to use them unless you have to. I think silicone kip tips are better for uh, for listening to the, the music in a more natural way, I think, compared to foam tips. Um, and it also comes with this rubber band thing with the, their logo Noble on it, okay? It also comes with uh, another carrying case right here, pretty basic. Um, let's see here. Some notes here, actually. Okay, so wizard it says nobleaudio.com is this a okay I'm not sure if that's a sticker or anything noble audio uh, for warranty product was built by return to manufacturing cool all right so this is interesting congratulations on your con purchase 
Note that some smartphones are sufficiently shielded for use, resulting in static noise. The convenience has included an adapter which solves your shielding problem. Okay, so they actually included a, an adapter for shielding noise because I guess people will use this with smartphones, God forbid. They use a really high-end IM with their smartphones. I mean, I think most people who buy an IEM of this price is probably going to use it with a DAP, right? Um, you shouldn't really use it with a smartphone. <laughs> most smartphones do not have DACs that are good enough to use um, with something like this, um, or AMP, right? I would suggest using like a USB dongle at least, um, or even better with with a DAP, right? Um, but yeah, this is the, uh, I guess this is the adapter that would prevent the shielding issues. So they include that, which is nice. I'm not going to use it because I'm not going to use a smartphone to drive my uh, Noble Cons, my $1,700 IMs. And they include another carrying case, right? This is a, yeah, this is probably the typical one that you'd want to carry around. Not this big one. This big one, I'm guessing, is just for, for traveling, right? Um, like going to like yeah, another city or another um, continent, basically. This one is used just for going outside. So I'm probably going to use this one more. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the IMs themselves. Again, this cable doesn't feel that great. And for $1,700 or for $2,400 MSRP, you should be giving us a better cable than this, Noble. Come on. Um, 3.5 millimeter connector. So with my campfires, I actually got a whole bunch of connectors, including um, adapters actually for 2.5 and 3.5 millimeter. Noble's doesn't give me anything like that at all, even though these are priced higher. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the Noble Cons. You can see they have some, apparently these are all different. Uh, these are all like hand-painted shells. Uh, and they're handcrafted in the US, of course. So there's a lot of labor that goes into making these and would be very interesting to compare these. And uh, yeah, these are the little nozzles right here. So uh, yeah, these are the Noble Cons. Um, hand-painted shells, very, very expensive. Uh, six drivers inside, uh, four balanced armature, one dynamic, and one electrostatic, right? So compare this to my Kifar Audios, which are, this is, these are the Solaris X, actually, which are um, actually tuned by Aston and Kern, and these ones cost 1200 bucks, so about $500 cheaper, still expensive. Uh, actually, maybe like the Aston Kerns a little bit more. Uh, in terms of the uh, aesthetics, I think I really like this red. And tell this red shell here is really beautiful. Uh, the Campfire Audio logo and the Aston Kern logo right here. They use MMCX connectors, whereas the the Nobles use um, a two pin. So again, the connectors are a little bit different, which is a pain in the ass because like the cables I buy and stuff, I really have to pay attention to the connectors I'm using, and I now have to buy what two different connectors. <sighs> That's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, uh, this one's these different connectors, and uh, you can tell the shells, yeah, I mean, fairly different. This one has the Noble logo right here. Yeah, um, and driver arrangements obviously very different. Um, the campfires, known for being super sensitive as well. I don't think the Nobles are going to be that sensitive as the campfires. Um, but I think the tunings will be quite different as well. These are, first of all, tuned by AK, uh, but also campfires with the Solaris, and the Solaris X actually in particular, it only has three drivers inside it. It only has two balanced armatures and a dynamic, and that's it, right? So two this has three drivers total. Um, yeah, two balanced armature drivers and a dynamic driver. That's it. And in the Noble Cons, they have six drivers, literally double the amount. So they have four balanced armatures, one dynamic, and one electrostatic, right? Piezoelectric. The trebles, I think, are very laid back. Um, they're kind of recessed, actually. I think that's one of the things that me and my friend didn't quite like about this one, is that trebles are maybe too laid back. The bass is also maybe a little bit too mo too recessed as well. Uh, could use a bit more bass and sub-bass as well. And the mids are probably the most forward part of these IMs, but it's not anything like too much. So I think overall, warm pair of IEMs, very laid back presentation, uh, very detailed, um, sound stage is okay. Um, but yeah, in, my, in our experience, I think could use a little bit more treble and bass. So it's not too forward on, um, on those frequencies. But yeah, overall, I, I think it's a nice pair of IEMs I enjoy listening to. So yeah, it'll be interesting to compare these $1,200, actually $1,500 MSRP. These are $1,500 MSRP against these $2,400 MSRP IEMs and uh, see how they match up. 
And uh, yeah, once again, I'll be getting my friend Eric, who is an audiophile. Um, he really has sensitive ears, and uh, <laughs> he'll know best how to, to uh, compare these two. And uh, I'll get his impressions of these two IEMs against each other. And on a plus, I'm also going to use this to compare my two DAPs as well. I have the hi RS6 in the Aston Current SE100, two very different DAPs. One uses a Delta Sigma architecture, one uses an R2R architecture. Um, so I'm interested to see the differences between that as well. So uh, that's it, guys. Um, stay tuned for um, Eric's impression of these two. And um, he's going to use this. I think we're going to use, first of all, compare the Nobles to the Campfires. And then um, we're going to use the uh, the Nobles as a baseline to compare to the high bees in the uh, AKSC 100s. So, yeah, uh, that's it, guys. Stay tuned for the comparison. Pretty nice. So what do you think compared to the Nobles? Uh, this one's like five hundred dollars less. So compared to what? You mean the cat bars? Yeah. Uh, I haven't tried the cat bars yet. Oh. I'm still comparing it to my FOCA. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Try the cat bars. They're pretty much like um, compared to my FOCA's. Uh, these Nobles are a lot more mid-centric, mm -hmm. and they're warmer. Uh, the bass actually is less boomier, not as strong, but more controlled. Um, I would say there's more detail here uh, in the mids and also the treble. Even though it sounds warmer, but I can hear a bit more detail. But that's because it's so mid forward too. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Soundstage is lower wider too? Uh, I'm sorry? Soundstage? Uh, actually about the same, probably. Interesting. But then the difference is... Um, because mine, like the uh, my C8, the the bass is so boomy sometimes, so that kind of affects the sound stage a little bit. Cool. Are these campfires? Do they have a higher sensitivity or a lower impedance compared to the, uh, the campfires? Are generally the most sens well, one of the most sensitive IMs you can get. Yeah, because they're super sensitive. Like yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, by quite a bit. I had to like lower the volume way yep. down. Yeah. Campfires are known for being super sensitive. Yep. Yeah. With, you gotta adjust your volume for this. Strange. These campfires sound like a uh, very. Mm -hmm. I just can't really say if I like it or not. Like, it's it's a high quality sound. It's very warm, very laid back. You know what? It's it's not exactly really laid back, but it's very warm. Yeah. Um, very mid centric. It's very mid centric. Uh, the treble is actually pretty elevated too, but the bass is actually not that elevated. I didn't find them anything to be really that elevated. Uh, I the, just, it's I just, pretty mid-centric. I found like it's just laid back overall. Uh, it's, it's, it's warm and mid-centric from what I can hear. Mm -hmm. um, out of all these three headphones, mm -hmm. uh, this has like the most prominent mids. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very, very, uh, very prominent mids. But then the bass here doesn't dig as deep, uh, whereas it's more like a, a mid, a mid, a mid type bass. The mid type bass makes it kind of like it's got some, like, it's more controlled, so it doesn't kind of bleed. However. The FLC8 and also the Nobles, the bass actually goes lower. Okay. So, so it digs deeper. The this bass? One, okay. Yeah, this one doesn't have that much sub bass. Okay. Um, however, it's very mid centric in a warm sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, like to a point with like, just like a romantic type of sound, it's, not, it's definitely not accurate. Uh, but it's a, it's a good quality sound because, you know, a lot of details there. Yep. Um, if I have to compare it, like, you know, I, I like the Noble sound a bit more because the Noble sound more reference, even though it's a, a warm sound. Yeah. It's warm but more reference in terms of just the balance between like the balance between the, the mids and the bass and the treble is just right. Okay. The nobles. nobles are more balanced. These ones are more mid forward. Yeah. Then the nobles are already kind of a little bit mid forward. But then just enough. Like they do it tastefully. Yeah. They do it to the point where like it's not out of whack. You know, it's it's still within a pretty neutral type of like, you know, like whatever and nothing's out of whack. But they just give it just a touch, just a hit more mid. Just, just to get you a bit more into the music, just a bit yeah. more. Yeah, it's they call they call that more musical, right? Okay, yeah. More so musical, yeah. It's just a bit more warmth, and yeah. so they do it in a very tasteful way. Yeah. Yeah, so so I like the way the nobles did it, whereas campfires is all, almost like, it's like gradles in a way. Mm -hmm. Like the low, it's like a low tier gradle, mm -hmm. where it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to throw everything at you, and then we're going to hide this, make the sensitive really high, so once you listen, you're like, whoa, you can kind of like that. But then, so you got to bring down the, 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 the volume, and then you compare, and it's yeah. very mid-centric. Lacking a bit of the bass because the bass doesn't dig very deep, yep. uh, very, very warm. Um, yep. It's fun. It's a fun sound. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, obviously it's not as good as the high tier Grados. The high tier Grados are very nice. Like the PS One Thousand is a very nice full size headphone. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's kind of sound like the low tier Grado, but then without the bass. Because low tier Grados actually still have a little bit more bass, but the low tier Grados don't really dig very deep either. But they have like a strong mid bass. Um, and also, there's no sound stage in, in the campfires almost. Mm. Yeah, because everything is more like uh, forward. The mids are very forward, so everything's just in your face. So when I listen to the band, it kind of feels like. Everyone in the band is just playing like elbow to elbow in the band. Like whether it's like the uh, the Nobles or my FLC8, there's a bit more like uh, soundstage, so I can hear. So it sounds like the guitars on this side, the voices in the center, the drums on that side, and then the bass is kind of like the bass guitars down here. Whereas this one, it sounds like they're all kind of almost together in the same spot. Okay. Yeah. So. But still, I still remember them being pretty detailed, though, right? Uh, pretty detailed, but it's because yeah. they elevated the mids a lot, so that's why it's pretty detailed because they elevated the mids a lot. Yeah. So the detail is okay. Detail is actually solid. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's actually a good quality sound. Right. It's just do you like the type of tuning, the type of balance of the sound. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's a fun pair of headphones, and to have these to keep, you know, the, the nobles is okay because they sound so different from each other. Yep. So it's not too bad. Yeah, I I, I still like those. So I just keep those. Oh. Yeah, they're pretty fun. But yeah, overall, I like these nobles. They're good. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the balance is uh, pretty tastefully done. Like, it's pretty close to neutral, except for they gave it just a little bit more up front mids. A little bit more. But just enough where that, you know, it's, 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 it's still balanced. Um, so that's pretty nice. I like that touch. Sure. Um, and then the, um, the bass is quite neutral. Um, yeah. So, yeah, overall, and then they add a little bit of warmth to it, but not too much. So, like, everything is just, just a little bit here, a little bit there. So, like, it, it's not too yep. Yeah, so it's, it's not as neutral as the katanas or the encores, but mm -hmm. I think they wanted to make it a little bit more musical sounding, so... It's the mids, probably. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it sounds like a little bit more of a warm sound, but just a touch. Just only a little bit, though, not too much. Mm -hmm. So it's actually quite nice. Honestly, at this price, it's pretty hard to get <laughs> much higher than this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I mean, there are stuff like the Empire Years, uh, Od Odin or whatever, but... Um, yeah, then you get into like, or the 64 audio Forte T is. Right. But that's like 3,000 bucks, 4,000 bucks. That, um, that's like no way I'm going to pay that, that much. Exactly. Yeah. 3,000 something for IEMs are really pushing it, man. Exactly. 3,000 something USD. Yeah. One thing is to like the exterior, the silver one. I kind of prefer like the other, like the, how do you say it? Like the classic one with the actual, like the in-brain design inside. Hmm. Yeah. So I personally, actually, I don't even. I actually might prefer the campfires design because it's, it's all right, but yeah, I like I like the, the AKs, the AK campfires. They're actually really nice and cool. But for cables, man, we have Noble is such a rip off. Noble? <laughs> yeah, Noble is, is like a huge rip off for cables, especially like even more more than campfire, more than anyone else. Like they really upcharge for it. Are these actually Noble cables? No. Okay, they're from these ones. No, I, I'm saying like, noble cables are way overpriced. Yeah, if you were gonna have to buy them. Like, even compared to other Western routes, like, they're way overpriced. How much are they paying on the It's like over a thousand bucks. <laughs> even campfires wouldn't charge that much. It's like two, 200 or something, maybe, but even other Western routes wouldn't charge that much. Right. Really overpriced. Yeah. Sure. yeah. This time we're gonna use the 4.4 millimeter Pentacon connector. It's a really sturdy, sturdy one. Yeah, I remember definitely use the uh, uh, use silicone. Mm -hmm. Way different sound. The phone sucks. Mm. This also shows the FLC 8S really is a nice bargain for what it is. You know, because it's not really completely embarrassed by these headphones. Mm -hmm. Like, if I compare this to, like, this is neutral to that. Uh, I like the mids on the Noble, for sure, because, yeah. but then they made it more forward, so obviously I'm going to hear a bit more detail, because it's more forward, it's more prominent than mids. Um, same thing, but if I tune this to be more mid-centric too, by changing the nozzle, it might actually bring out a lot more detail too in the mids. Sometimes it's just about the tuning, it's not even about the actual technical specs anymore, um, because these are actually technically quite good already, so all you got to do is just change the gold nozzle for the mids, and it might sound actually really detailed as well for the mids, but the problem now is the tuning of the balance is now I'm losing some of the treble. Whereas, like, the good thing about the Noble is that 
they gave you the more prominent mids, but then they already tuned like the treble and the bass to match up with the slightly better mids already. Okay. And then that's where it's going to be tough for me to actually try to like tune everything else just to match it back up. Because I'm not sure if I can tune the treble for these. And then so I, if I add a bit more bass, I, I remember when I added a bit more bass to it, there's just too much bass. And then, and then that, that was a problem too. So like, but then like this one, they found they fine tune like the bass already and the treble, you don't have to touch anything. Whereas it's pretty much back in balance with like the mids being a bit more forward. Here I make the mids more forward, definitely it'll be too much compared to the treble and bass. And if I add that, I remember the bass is way too low if I actually did that. So I'm going to have to like test it out again and see. But it'll be interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's more than just the tuning though, right? Because like anywhere you can tune and it's software right and mm -hmm. get it to whoever you want mm -hmm. it's it's about the technology too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for the nobles i mean it's not just about more drivers you can put whatever balance star however many balance drivers your drivers but for the nobles they put a dynamic one and they put electrostatic mm -hmm. for the trebles so your flc8s i'm sure doesn't have electrostatic mm -hmm. so you can't even if you were to put the treble i don't think the treble is going to sound exactly the same mm -hmm. because it's a different technology too so mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's a it's a tuning plus it's a technology on top of that mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. But I think from a tech standpoint though, like overall these FLCs were actually really, really impressive. Like yeah. I, I remember like the mid sounded mm -hmm. really nice when I actually whatever. It's just I couldn't get the right tuning for like the other stuff. Yeah, I just couldn't balance up the treble and the bass with it. Okay. Unfortunately. Because like I really like the FLC eight S except I would actually like the treble like, like give me maybe about just just exactly like the way the nobles are. Give me that extra 10 to 15 percent more mids, not too much, mm -hmm. just right. So that's where the nobles are cool. It, what, I actually like tuning it noble. That's why I like. It. It's pretty much like this one, but you gave me an extra 10, 10 to 13 percent more mid. Actually, maybe mm -hmm. 10 to 13 percent more mid, 10 to 15 percent more mids, and then that makes the mids more forward, and then it's more fun, and then I get more detail from the mids, and then you also find fine tune the treble and the bass just a touch, just to match up with that extra. Yeah, it's just right. Yeah, because they pretty much sound like the nobles pretty much sound like they had with, with better mids. Yeah. Like the balance is pretty much the same. The amount of bass that you get from that and this is pretty much almost the same. So like both were really tastefully done with the bass, yep. but only they, they wanted to give you a little bit more mids here. Yeah. Yeah, they just want to give you a little bit more mids here for the extra fun. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Could be that, but I mean, that's a over a thousand dollar difference you're talking about. So yeah, it's a. Uh, if it's just tuning, <laughs> I don't know that's ever worth. That's worth a thousand bucks. But yeah. Uh, well, you know what? With audio gear, man, <laughs> like, like we know, right? The mission returns. And sometimes these Chinese companies, man, you don't know what the hell they put in, in their stuff. You know, like, like at certain prices back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Because like those Chinese stuff back in the day really hits really high above their, their price range back in the day. Yeah. Like this one, V Sonic, and the Dunus. These three. Yeah. Yeah. These are the three that I've heard them. Wow, they are so high above their price range. V Sonic, FLC 8S, and Dunus. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah. Because yeah, all three, obviously, I used to have the V Sonics, and those are mm -hmm. amazing. Like, I don't think there's anything under 200 back then that was even close to the V Sonics, unless the files are really good now. But I've never listened to file IEM, so I can't say. I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt, these files. But, um, yeah. There's so many. Like, even my uh, TSMRs, I mean, they had two electrostatics and um, I think like five balanced armatures in it mm -hmm. for 600 bucks. Yeah. So. I mean, the, and this, these nobles only have one per uh, per per IM, so yeah. Mm. Uh, and these were at discount. I don't really, like no way I'd pay full price twenty four hundred bucks for these. Yeah, of course. So you said like the um, the katanas were fifty percent off for Black Friday. Yep, they were about nine fifty ish. Interesting. At that price, be pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah. The cons are still like, yeah, there's about seventeen hundred after the discount. Yeah. But they're originally a lot more to begin with too. They're originally like six hundred six hundred bucks more to begin with. So yeah, I'm really curious what the katana is, you know. If it's actually like very neutral. Then you should get it. <laughs> uh, if Canadian dollar ever goes back up close to par and is it say fifty percent of sale, I might think about it. It went, it went up like uh Yeah, just a bit. Up. It's still not that much, man. I mean yes. par. Like oh, it's it's not gonna go back up. Yeah, in the future. I don't know, that's wishful thinking. Because otherwise, no, man. <laughs> this way too much of a markup. Mm. Plus, the high beats have better 
they have got better Bluetooth, they have LDAC support. The AK still have that. Uh, okay. Well, that would be suddenly nice. I mean, it's like a more sound stage too, so. Yeah. I mean, but anything sound different. It's just a warmer sound. Mm -hmm. It's. Yeah, that's also good too. Yeah. Like uh, campfires too. I don't know. All right. So um, after using the Noble Cons, uh, me and my friend Eric, um, I think our general impressions are they are these are very very good IEMs. Now I'm not sure if they're actually worth the money or not because. Well, generally, once you go over $1,000, it's really diminishing returns from then on, and uh, all you get is pretty much different sound signatures, mostly. Maybe a slight improvement in sound, but not too much. But I think overall, we both agree that these are generally better sounding than his FLC8s, uh, which are his Chinese IMs that he's been using for a, a while, as well as my Aston and Kern Campfire Audio Solaris X. Uh, in general, just because the cons um, really everything is good about them like they have treble they have bass sub bass um in the mid range is probably uh the most forward out of those but not too much it's just very tastefully done um so yeah there's nothing about these iams i think are uh, are overdone or recessed or anything like that they're just overall pretty perfect honestly um so yeah that's what we think about them um they've got pretty much everything you want um they got trebles not too much of it but it's definitely noticeable in there present um the base is there as well uh definitely not as recessed as it is on my solaris x and the mids are there um not too forward though uh but it's, it means not too much neutral but it's not too forward either it's probably just right um so yeah overall the cons are very very nice iams i think we we both enjoy these iams so comparing the noble audio cons to the aston kern campfire audio solaris x's uh we definitely prefer the noble audio cons that's not to say that the solaris x are a bad pair of iams they're definitely not i mean these are campfire audios i believe one of their flagship IEMs, in fact. Um, so these are also um, kind of mid to upper tier IEMs as well. They retail for $1,500. So these are definitely not bad IEMs by any means in terms of the sound. Um, they have a very detailed mid-range, actually, and a lot of clarity. However, we just felt like the treble and the bass were a little bit too recessed for us. Um, basically, the mids kind of dominate in these IEMs, and they make for a very relaxed, very laid-back presentation, and like I said, the mids are quite detailed, and uh, you do get some soundstage and some clarity, uh, so they're, they are there and present, and these are not a bad pair of IEMs by any by any measure, they're pretty good. Um, however, you are comparing to the Noble Audio Cons, so keep that in mind. The Cons are the second highest priced Noble Audio uh, IEMs, and these are roughly, if you compare the MSRP, almost a thousand dollars more expensive than the uh, Solaris X. So we have to be fair to the Solaris X here. We are comparing it to a lot more expensive IEMs. However, yeah, both of us pretty much prefer the Noble Audio Cons. The Noble Audio Cons do, does not suffer from any of the recessions that um, the Solaris has we felt there's nothing lacking in the trebles there's nothing lacking in the bass um it just felt like everything was tuned just just right and the mid-range is there but it's not quite as dominant as it is on the solaris x it's definitely not neutral but at the same time it's been pushed up a bit to make it a little bit more musical sounding a little bit more fun um whereas the solaris x because the trebles and the bass are so recessed um we felt like the mids just kind of predominate even though they are quite detailed um but yeah compared to the cons yeah the cons are definitely better um everything is just a little bit more balanced uh, so yeah, I, I think both of us prefer the the sound of the cons and again, like I said, no knock on the campfire audios I think these are very good for for the price for what you pay for um, I mean you got to consider the fact that Western IMs in general are quite overpriced But uh, considering the fact that the noble audio cons are like almost a thousand dollars more um, the campfire audio Solaris X um, actually does a pretty decent job uh, just yeah, we felt like it, the signature perhaps could be improved by pushing up the frequencies um, and making it a little bit more balanced overall. The Noble Audio Cons are definitely a more balanced pair of IEMs compared to the Solaris X. So that's it. Um, that's our impressions of comparing these two. Definitely would prefer the Noble Audios again, but these ones are a lot more expensive. So yeah, um, that's our impressions comparing these two IEMs. Campfire Audio, Aston Current Solaris X, very relaxed. Um, I say laid back presentation, uh, but very mid dominant. Uh, whereas the Noble Audio is just fantastically balanced on all sides um, and it's just tuned pretty well overall.
So uh, nothing too much to even complain about with the cons. I think uh, maybe the base could be pushed up a little bit higher in the cons, but um, that's pretty much about it. Um, yeah, nothing really to complain there. So yeah, the Noble Cons um, overall pretty well balanced across all frequencies. Um, maybe the sub bass could be pushed up a little bit higher, but there's really not much to complain about here. Uh, for the mids, um, I think they're pretty, both of these IMs have very detailed mids. However, just the Noble Con is a lot more balanced overall, and the sound stage is a bit better on the Noble Audios as well. And I'm also going to say that um, the Campfire Audios also come with better cable stock, in my opinion, compared to the Noble Audios. Noble Audios didn't come with very good cable stock, so I had to swap it out. These are Linsol Nymph cables, um, aftermarket cables. Um, but for stock cables, I think um, the Campfire Audios actually are a bit better, I think. So that's it guys, that's the impressions of the Noble Audio Cons. They are very good IEMs, but again, very expensive. Um, these are definitely the highest end IEMs or headphones that I've ever tried. Um, there's only a few more IEMs I believe that are more expensive than this, like the top of the line Noble Audio Sultans, as well as the JH Audio Layla's, um, the Empire Ears Odin uh, 64 Audio Tia Fortes. Um, so yeah, you can you can go even higher to the three thousand dollar range, but um, you know that's that's really pushing it when it comes to IEMs. I mean, there's really not a whole lot higher in, than the uh, cons. So uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know if you guys have any comments feedback, uh, leave them in the, in the section below. And as always, thanks for watching.